Chapter 3 The Vajrayana The word Vajra has the meaning of immutability or indestructibility. On the relative level there are all the samsaric things which are impermanent and change from one thing into another. From the absolute level the essence of something is always there and never changes and it is not affected by one's relative viewpoint. The main concern of the tantric teachings then is working on that changeless immutable essence. That is why it is called the Vajrayana or the vehicle of the changeless. There are two vehicles, the Sutrayana and the Vajrayana. The Sutrayana or the Sutra approach is more related to cause. It is called the cause which is the vehicle with characteristics. Because by developing this sutra or explanatory level one learns all that is necessary to create the conditions for the effect or result. The actual result is the Vajrayana. To attain the result one needs to train in the Sutrayana. The sutras show the nature of phenomena. They show what is virtue and what is not. They show the value of practicing certain things and giving up other things. The nature of cause and effect, karma. And what one is trying to develop and what one is trying to clear away in meditation. One needs to train in the sutras first to become very clear about these things. So that is why it is called the cause which has characteristics or the vast aspect of practice because it touches upon so many different things. The sutras are mainly concerned with the development of the various causal conditions for realization. In the tantric approach one goes directly to the very elements associated with the result itself in one's practice. This result aspect is called the Vajrayana, or the quintessential mantra. The problem with the word Tantra is that it is not only used by Buddhists, but also by Hindus. Apart from having the same name, there is no correspondence at all between the Buddhist and Hindu Tantra, except both have their origins in India and used the Sanskrit language. In many Western books, there is a tendency to suggest that the Buddhist Tantra is related to the Hindu Tantra. There are, however, no similarities in philosophy, in practice, in point of view, in origin, in teachers, and so everything is different. The Hindu Tantra, for instance, is based on the idea of an Atma, or a soul, or a higher self. One practices various yogic meditations using subtle channels, energies and drops. In Sanskrit, Nadi, Bindu and Prana. These channels refer to the subtle or psychic channels. In Sanskrit, Nadi, Tibetan Sa. Not anatomical ones, much like meridians in acupuncture, in which psychic energies or winds, in Sanskrit, Pranjna, Tibetan long travel. The Buddhist philosophy, whether on the sutra or tantra level, involves trying to understand the absence of any self or higher self. So from the beginning the two approaches are very different. When the Dharma teachings went to Tibet, there was the simultaneous development of the sutra and the tantra approach. The sutras were studied mainly as a way to understand basic dharma. The tantras were applied principally as a way of meditating. So first one would study the sutras to find out the way that things were and gain a conviction of the meaning of Buddha's teachings with a good theoretical basis in them. When it came to actually meditating, there was a great emphasis on the Tantra or Vajrayana techniques in Tibet. So in Tibet there was the Sutrayana level of meditation called Jigong, which is usually translated as analytical meditation, 
in which one gradually works through the analysis of various things, understands the various objects of meditations, and develops wisdom, all of which emerges through analysis. The meditation related to the Vajrayana is called Jogom, which is usually translated as actual absorption or direct abiding meditation. In this meditation, one concentrates not on the analysis of external objects, but goes directly to resting deeply in the inner mind, and by doing this, one is introduced to the deeper aspects of meditation quickly. The reason the Vajrayana was favoured in Tibet was that it causes a much quicker and direct way of reaching the goal of enlightenment. The analytical Sutrayana approach tends to take much more time, although both approaches lead to the same result. Analytical meditation is mainly based on the development of wisdom. Vajrayana meditation is mainly based on faith and confidence. To develop Sutrayana meditation, one needs wisdom. To gain the results of Vajrayana meditation, one needs faith. Generally, the Sutrayana was studied at the same time one was meditating on the Vajrayana level in Tibet, so these two methods can reinforce each other. If one follows the Sutrayana approach, the ordinary Mahayana can take a long time. For example, to develop the parameter of generosity, one must develop one's generosity to such a point that one would give up even one's arms, legs or whole body. The cultivation of all these parameters is a very large task. Compared to this, the Vajrayana is a very simple and easy task. When properly practiced, it enables one to achieve the goal of Buddhahood through skillful means in a single lifetime. The Vajrayana has several names. Sometimes it is called in Tibetan Doj Tegpa or the Vajrayana where Doj is the Vajra and Tegpa is Yana. Another word used for the Vajrayana in the Tibetan is the Tibetan word Sang Nyak which is often inappropriately translated as the secret mantra Yana. The actual meaning of the Tibetan syllable nyak, or mantra, here is being able to achieve the goal very quickly or quickly getting the results one wants. The syllable sang in the word is sometimes translated as secret, but it really means very vital, or something which is quintessential, or necessary and vital. For example, a machine has many part, vital parts which allows it to do work. These parts are called the Sang in Tibetan, meaning the very core or the very essence of the machine. So Dorj Tekpa actually means a very indestructible vehicle which contains the vital thing which enables one to reach the goal very quickly. When this word is translated as secret, it gives it, gives it the incorrect impression of something which needs to be covered up. This is incorrect because the word sangyak doesn't mean a secret, but it means the vital essence. <laughs>